Gallagher, Simon Coveney and Michael Creed were out and about at a mart in Fermoy. Fianna Fáil were on the canvas in Longford and they were holding a briefing on housing. Sinn Féin had an event in the Mansion House calling for a United Ireland vote by 2025. Solidarity People Before Profit on the canvas, keeping the powder dry in advance of tomorrow's manifesto launch. Labour were concentrating on waste of public money. The Social Democrats were briefing on their housing policy. The Greens were having a briefing on their nature and pollution policy. And to look at all of this, we're joined today by a political reporter, Mary Regan, political correspondents, Paul Cunningham and Michal Lahan. Thanks all for coming I, in. Our yeah. pleasure. Ah, yeah, good. Isn't it always? And the poll, the Irish Times poll, let me add the caveats the usual <coughs> caveats. We'll have a, let's, have a, let's have a run around the table. Me, or one caveat from you about opinion polls. A snapshot in time, margin of error. Oh, that's Does anyone poll that matters? <laughs> Paul. <laughs> 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 um, has to be related to other polls. It's the context of the polls. You the can't just look at one. The context of the polls. Okay. And they have their own research which are slightly different to the polls. The polls never cohesively fit with what parties are picking up on the doorstep or with their own research. Never happens. Different polls also understate and overstate different parties. At this particular poll, the Irish Times poll, Fianna Fáil outperform it. Sinn Féin sometimes don't perform as well as what they're given in it. According to some. According to some. OK, well, it was conducted in amongst 1,200 people, 120 locations on Thursday, Friday and Saturday, which means it happened during the election, and a margin of error of 2.8%, as we say, a snapshot, only an indication last poll in October and it said if you haven't heard it by now uh, the that Fine Gael are down 6 at 23% in terms of support fin, uh, Fianna Fáil no change 25% Sinn Féin up 7 points to 21% Labour down 1 to 5% the Green Party no change at 8% and Independents and others at 18% that includes Social Democrats People Before Profit etc what do we make of this poll Michal? The Fine Gael figure is interesting uh it's ahead, I think, of what many in their party would have thought they were at. It does say that while going into this election, many predicted there would be losses for Sinn Féin. It's a possibility there they could hold their seats, maybe a few gains here and there, but you would look at some constituents and you think, well, they'll do well to hold on. But that ability to stay probably around the 20-seat mark suddenly uh, becomes very real indeed. Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, there looks to be little in it based on that poll, but there is the decline which is outside of the margin of error when it comes to Fine Gael's vote. They're taking solace in the fact that it's a neck and neck contest, but that is a, a figure that really would send alarm bells through a campaign headquarters, even if they're not admitting it. Uh, Mary, uh, Michal Martin, the Fianna, Fianna Fáil leader, was being asked questions about this poll out on the uh, out on the canvas earlier on in Longford. And Michal Martin did that thing he sometimes does where he has the serious tone of voice, but there's a barely suppressed smile at the corners of his mouth. <laughs> but he actually is yeah, just going back a day because on Sunday he was asked a question on this week, RT Radio 1's programme, did you smile when you saw the Sunday Times poll? To what? which he said, no. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're trying to hide it. They're trying to hide uh, and also claim that, you know, their own polls mightn't be showing them the same thing. I think like there is another caveat that we forgot to mention at the start of this, which is something that's shown by successive RT opinion polls in recent years, which is more and more and increasingly and increasingly in recent years, voters are making their mind up during the course of an election campaign. So campaigns themselves matter more now <coughs> than they might have once upon a time when people had their mind made up before the campaign uh, got underway. And what the Taoiseach was uh, saying in his snap analysis earlier is that there is more volatility and that it's all to play for. And I think he's right on both those counts. Volatility, a big feature of the last two election campaigns. Remember 2011, uh, there was a clear out of two thirds of the doll at that point in time. And similar, you need big numbers of uh, of, of um, TDs losing their seats last time around. So like we're in this kind of situation of kind of Irish politics, I think, is going through this period of transition. And whereas the last election, we spoke about this in the podcast last week, the last election was all about fragmentation. I think what we're going to see this time based on the polls is fragmentation. Once again, um, more, uh, 
you know, and what what I think it's pointing to is uh, another long period of government formation. Fragmentation once again, reminiscent of that song, which brings Frags us to which brings us on uh, of 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 uh, fragmentation once again, and Sinn Fein today calling for a united Ireland. The poll dropped nicely for them and their launch big event in the Mansion House, hundred and first anniversary uh, of the doll in the Mansion House. Mary Lou Macdonald, another person suppressing a smile today, and. These ratings in in the opinion poll, Mary Lou Macdonald personal approval ratings up four percent in this poll, and party ratings up seven percent. Given their local election results uh, and European election results last year, this is a good day for Sinn Fein. If these polls are to be believed, with all the caveats yeah. we put in at the start, it's definitely a good day. And what um, Sinn Fein has been saying um, consistently now, long before this poll is that they've learned the lessons of the local election. And, and the lesson seems very simple, but it's often hard to apply, which is you need to get the vote out, you need to be connected to your voters, and then you need to ensure that they deliver on it. And they point to the recent by-elections, a very good example in Dublin Midwest, where they managed to get Mark Wall in. And this lesson that they've learned is now flowing into the general election campaign, they say, and therefore they say it's no particular <coughs> surprise. So we'll wait to see if it does last, because once again, coming to polls, Sinn Féin will be a party where some analysts say it tends to overestimate the support they get rather than underestimate. So let's see if that continues um, to carry through the polls we're going to see on Sunday and in the coming weeks. The other thing that feeds into is this uh, other thing today that the, the Sinn Féin were being asked about given your ratings in the poll, does mm -hmm. this feed into your push to get into the Virgin Media and RTE TV leaders debates? Mary Lou MacDonald agreeing thoroughly with that sentiment. But Leo Varadkar also been asked um, about it, Mary, that he, he said he had no problem. It wasn't a matter for him. It was up to the broadcasters. Presumably, though, Fine Gael would welcome, to some degree, Sinn Féin coming in because the government expects to defend its own policies when challenged on them. The difficulty of having Sinn Féin in a TV leaders debate would be for Fianna Fáil. Uh, yeah, like, so who would, in a, in a three-way debate, who would the attention be focused on would would you find Finnefall and Finnegan Finnefall and Sinn Fein focusing on the government's record? Would you find uh Finnefall and Finnegal, you know, watching Sinn Fein and, you know, based on this poll if Sinn Fein is is on the rise, or would you have Sinn Fein trying to cast Finnefall in some ways as being part of the government, you know, like would in the traditional role that smaller parties in a coalition might have played, would you find Finnefall as the sort of mudguard for Finnegale in that in that election if Finnefall was turning their if Sinn Fein was turning their focus onto Finnefall in that way? Yeah, I mean, Michal Martin was asked about this. He was on the campaign trail in um, in Longford and he differed from Leo Varadkar. He said it was right and appropriate that only Leo Varadkar or him could be and Taoiseach and on that basis it made sense for viewers, for voters, that they would be able to see these two leaders go head to head on their various different policies. So Leo adopted one point of view saying he didn't have a problem and it was up to the broadcasters. Michal Martin was very clear he felt it should just be himself and Leo. And also Darrow, Brian Finnefall today saying that Sinn Féin aren't running enough candidates to lead a government in any event is what he was saying. So he was saying this, the choice of who would lead the government is down to the leader of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael and that's why they should both participate in a head-to-head. -head. Right. Anyway, all, all so far in the realms of the hypothetical, although mm. uh, Sinn Féin continuing to seek legal advice on this. Yeah, that, that's, that's still in play. And I suppose we do know that the debates we expect will be significant because while the weather has been very good, this is still a campaign that isn't very long. And particularly, this is a relevant thing to rural canvassing where many candidates like to actually visit the home and maybe get inside the door and sit down. You need a bit of time to have that extensive rural canvas. And many of the people I've spoken to who are out canvassing at this moment say that's not going to be possible. Uh, out of them as well, there's a detectable different mood between Sinn Féin candidates, Fianna Fáil candidates and the Fine Gael candidates. The Fine Gael candidates, as I'm detecting it from a fairly big ring around, are more nervous. They're more focused on their own seat. That's always the case anyway in an election. You are focused on your own Neelan's seat. Neelan's law. Absolutely. And protect your own seat. But there is a sense that each person is fighting their own battle here and they can't be too concerned with the overall approach that's been taken. That suggests a degree of confidence slipping uh, about the strategy, about the plans and about what's happening. It's every person going to protect their own patch. There appears to be more confidence across some other parties, notably Fianna Fáil and today now Sinn Féin as well. 
in the television debates, one of the issues about a rural canvas or an urban canvas <clears throat> as well is the simple issue of leave, shut that door and don't be letting the heat out, Paul. As a former environment correspondent, this is even partially a climate change issue. Don't be wasting that good heat <laughs> at the door. People don't like knocking on doors in the dark when people have sure. other things to be doing. Uh, uh, and even as something as simple as that. And as an urbanite, I mean, the, the very idea of inviting the person who knocked on the door to come in, sit down in the parlour and have a cup of tea, forget about it in Dublin. It's just yeah, knocking the door, quick word and gone. Dublin. And we were remarking earlier on that it has been noticed that sometimes um, from all parties and none, uh, leaflets will be dropped through the door saying, sorry, I missed you, even though you happen to be sitting inside on the couch. So I think there's a, <laughs> a general awareness that maybe knocking on the door isn't the smartest of ideas. I suppose it does get back to the question too, though, and that is still there. Like, was Fine Gael 100% prepared for this election or was there something about the wheels coming off the car in the final, in the final days as you went into that weekend? Uh, there is a sense that perhaps things weren't fully ready. Was there a view that things could be kept together until April? Was there a view that Fianna Fáil was actually going to get that election date given to them? Uh, but in the end, numbers collapsed within did, the doll. But even Fine Gael is just saying that when it came to party organisation, the stuff, the election literature was there and ready to go. So at least from that point of view, they felt prepared. The, the debate I from, was getting from some of the um, Fine Gael TDs and candidates was the question of the timing. Should they have just gone earlier in the summer? You know, last summer 2019 and not left it so late where you have less chance to be able to uh, control the message and control the campaign. But Brexit was still the big thing then and the then thing. even the Novemberists who were arguing for could've, the pre-Christmas election could have, should have, would have indeed. Mary sent, there are some issues though that aren't predictable in an election. Crime in this one. Again, front pages of, 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 of the papers today, um, the GRA, issues within the, the GRA uh, resourcing, second-hand bulletproof jackets, uh, people not getting adequate training. There is some dissent on this. The, uh, the uh, chief superintendent up in Drada saying, uh, Christy Mangan saying that he's never had any difficulty with the ERU arriving on time. But the Association of Garda Sergeants and Inspectors, the Garda Representative Association saying, yeah, this is a live issue. It's happening Another attack overnight in Cork, somebody beaten and doused with petrol. The crime thing is there. It's just a sentiment thing. It doesn't matter what the stats say. Mm -hmm. It just is a bad mood abroad on this. Yeah, and when we're talking about Fine Gael's planning for their campaign, their messaging might have been focused on a lot of issues, but the script in some ways was torn up for them by events just happening since the start of the campaign and crime being the predominant one off one there even you know pensions and other issues are featuring featuring strongly as well and um yeah you know the Taoiseach was um coming out with statistics about the homicide rate how it's half of what it was 10 years ago but i think all these statistics aren't really cutting it with you know in terms of what people are feeling on the ground because you know we spoke about it already Fianna Fáil perhaps you know appealing more to the sentiment side of how people are feeling frightened and worried and anxious and uh, Cork in particular this was an issue already well before this campaign uh, began and um, mm. you know the Cork, Cork um, North Central <coughs> by-election crime was probably one of the pre predominant issues and you know, you know in relation to the Taoiseach then being at the Martin for Moy today you know he was targeting two demographics where really the polls which suggest Fine Gael are at their weakest and that is um, the farming community and also Munster um, particularly that Sunday Times poll showing the party to be quite weak in the Munster constituencies which I think has some TDs in that area quite worried. Some yeah, the Irish TDs. Times poll today showing uh, Fianna Fáil ahead in both Munster and rural areas there but again obviously Suggesting Suggesting, suggesting indeed, Paul. I suppose Thank like you. Fine, Gael, Fine Gael's problem in Munster, I mean, is beginning to look very profound. If you have analysts in Limerick like Eugene Phelan of the Limerick Leader uh, yesterday evening on the 6-1 News saying, is there a possibility within Limerick City that Fine Gael won't win any of the seats there? Is, is that, that is something that's been spoken about now. So not alone are you not going to win back the seats lost in 2016. Is there a possibility of further losses? And if you're to look at the Taoiseach in Munster today, I suppose for Moy is that a bad place to go? It's, it's dairy <coughs> centred as well. It's the heart, it's the golden veil uh, and it's the dairy sector wouldn't be as badly affected as the beef sector either on the general sense of Leo Varadkar in a mart. How did he do in that environment? He did fine. He did, he did OK. But it's it's not obviously it's not many. It's not many politicians in the natural environment anyway. But it, what is there to pull this back? 
for Fine Gael at this moment. And that comes back to the debates. It's probably going to be there that, that they will hope to, to make progress now, because not alone, you can see the decline there. And yes, they can point to the fact that they're, they're neck and neck with Fianna Fáil, but the decline will have to be arrested first before momentum can be rebuilt. The pitch being, uh, Leo Varadkar wrapped up at his tour of the Mart there saying he, Fine Gael have the right track record, the right team, and the right policies. But how much scope is there in a general election if the mood abroad is that people don't agree that the team or the policies or the track record is right? How much room is there to turn the oil tanker in the middle of an election campaign? I think campaigns are dynamic, so there is definitely time. And there are still the possibilities of the unknown unknown coming into the equation, which once again sort of uh, turns things upside down. I was asking one Fine Gael candidate, how did they answer some of that thing of, you know, you've had enough time, you're talking about what you're going to do in five years, but sure, why didn't you do it five years ago? And his line was to try and pitch it back. And he says, well, do you remember who let the Troika in? And do you remember who got rid of them? Yeah. And it's that confidence of we're the people who who, who did the hard yards don't mess it up now. And it's to say, sow those seeds of doubt about change because change is always a, a real a issue. It's an attraction in election. I want something different. I want something new. And what's Fine Gael, part of their campaign, and it's already happening on the ground, is to sow those um, seeds of doubt into it. But is there time to answer you directly? Yes. But okay. the parliamentary party, I mean, it wasn't the grassroots. The Fine Gael parliamentary party to hold their own seats picked Leo Varadkar for this sole reason that he would be the new thing. He would be the different dynamic uh, mm. person on the to campaign. To win the air war. Yeah, to win the air war. And it, he would have a degree of showbiz when he arrived in towns and the like, and it would all be different. And that's why Simon Coveney wasn't looked at. It is bizarre that you speak to some Fine Gael candidates out and about now who are saying Simon Coveney needs to be uh, given a more prominent placing at this moment. Mary, there is a sense though that the campaign hasn't fully got up and running yet. We're sort of uh, still in the realms of 1940 and the phony war at this stage Figures aren't being published, full manifestos aren't being published. You went to a housing briefing today, uh, Fianna Fáil housing briefing, and uh, even the, the policy briefing wasn't there in advance, so you could throw questions and, and probe at it. So are we still waiting till the end of this week, this weekend, early next week? What are the indications with when things get cranked up in earnest? Yeah, I mean, this is what's kind of described as the policy phase of the election campaign, uh, whereas next week will be the big focus on the, the the final push and the big debates. But this week is when they're having their policy launches. And I think what we're seeing generally is um, maybe not a huge <coughs> amount of detail or nitty gritty in terms of policies, but rather parties focusing on having one big policy selling point that they hope all the focus will be on. So Fianna Fáil, for example, has announced this SSIA type saving scheme for first time buyers, whereby you save three euro and they put it, the government puts in one euro towards the purchasing of your first home. So they, you know, that's that's one policy they're pushing. But they had their housing policy launch this morning and one thing was absent from it, which was an actual you know, document outlining their housing policy. And we kind of asked for it and they said, oh, this will be published later in the day. Now, they have published uh, the notes from their uh, press launch this morning. But I think we're going to have to wait for their manifesto launch to get, you know, bullet by bullet, you know, um, points of what their policies are, how they're costed. You know, a lot of questions around cost, for example, you know, they say, oh, this will be, you know, our f and, and this is this is across the parties, you know, our, our launch the next day will have that piece of information. Uh, one thing Fianna Fáil were asked about today was why they are not opting for a rent freeze, a flat rent freeze. That is something that the Sinn Féin party is proposing. But Fianna Fáil said they would have, they had legal advice and they published their legal advice just a short time ago saying a rent freeze would be unconstitutional, uh, which then throws the question back to Sinn Féin about their proposed rent freeze. So, um, yeah, I think what we're seeing is parties maybe not wanting to get too bogged down in policy, but they're hoping to have, you know, a few kind of bestseller policies that they hope will catch the eye of various demographics out there. Yeah, I mean, we should have the Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil policy um, manifesto. In other words, the whole shooting gallery with costings before the end of the week and then Sinn Féin is early next week. So all that policy stuff will then finally be on the table. You'll have that phase of everyone cross-referencing what everyone else Don't forget what Regina Doherty told Sean O'Rourke. No one reads manifestos during election <laughs> campaigns. Interesting well, viewers. Well, we, we <laughs> will. You'd have to wonder if the suggested poll bounce for Sinn Féin is 
related to them in some ways getting out of the traps early with policies. For example, this uh, pension Mm. issue, this pension anomaly, Sinn Féin Féin were the first parties to spot that and respond to it. Although, Uh, just on that, because I I made that statement on on Morning Ireland and immediately I got in text from saying, well, Brendan Ryan for the Labour Party been making the running on it for the past six months. Uh, People before profit were saying the exact same thing when it came to never allowing it to go mm. beyond 65 uh, and you can go back years Uh, and years. And in fairness, it has... It has been raised first. in the Dáil in recent months and it has been raised in PQs <coughs> and all the rest of it as well. So yeah, that has to be said as well. Health is another thing that uh, is coming up. It's always one of these things in Ireland that is on the election campaign, whether or not people base their vote on it. Is, they don't, is, is, though, isn't is, it? Is, the is research another, illustrates that they, they don't, but it is one of the prominent issues. And the Sláinte Shakir document is the only show in town. All parties are agreed on it. So there seems to be people positioning themselves on delivery rather than argument over the policy with the possible exception of this thing around the use of the National Treatment Purchase Fund, which people rounded on Stephen Donnelly, the Fianna Fáil health spokesman, spokesman about on a, in a health debate on uh, Clareburn Live last night. Yeah, all parties signed up to it, but there was never really that great urgency, was there, in the Dáil about it and about progressing it quickly. Yes, you heard a lot about it from, from Roisin Chortall. Were, as were many others, such fervent believers right. in the whole project. Is it reminiscent I, of vision sure. for change in the mental health service, yeah. a lot of lip service, not a lot of health service. It, it does have a greater sign up and it does. I mean, it is ostensibly that document that underpins he- health policy for the next 10 years. I suppose yesterday too, what you saw as the kind of the big health items, particularly in relation to children, wasn't it like things like hospital charges ending for children, free dental care for under 16s uh, and that type of thing. I suppose there was an interesting contribution from the independent candidate, Kevin Boxer Moran, this afternoon when he talked about hearing all these things, which is totally at odds to his experience with conversations with the with Pascal Dunu and his role as finance minister in recent months and how difficult it was to get any money. We definitely have reached this point in the election cycle where promises are, are falling from the sky at the moment and we haven't seen the castings. And it does, it is at odds with what Pascal Dunne has been saying uh, about prudent financial management if all this stuff uh, is suddenly in play. We've got a first debate between um, party leaders uh, tomorrow night on Virgin Media, Mary, Michal Martin versus Leo Varadkar. It's, it's, it's a two-person debate so far. What are what what's going to be looked at in the absence of what you were talking about the policy manifestos there? It's about again sentiment and positioning. Who beats the other person up worst on this one, as opposed to the forensics of argument, isn't it? Yeah, and it's suitability to be Taoiseach. That's what it's ultimately about. Um, if you recall back the Bertie Ahern versus Enda Kenny big debate uh, before the two thousand and seven general election. Bertie Hearn really focused, there was a kind of a role reversal thing there. He was Taoiseach at the time. And rather than, you know, Enda Kenny focusing on his record, on Bertie Hearn's record, Bertie Hearn switched it back and really kind of raised doubts about Enda Kenny's suitability, sowed doubts amongst the mind of voters there. And, you know, you'd wonder if that's the kind of tactic that Leo Varadkar might go with this time around in opposition to Micheál Martin. Um, And then for Micheál Martin's point of view, he needs to stay on message and, um, you know, land punches on what this government has achieved in office or its record. I suppose the danger for both of them is the danger for Micheál Martin is that he will, you know, revert to that haughty tone, that that what Leo Varadkar has spoken about, the, you know, the high and mighty tone for Leo Varadkar, it's that danger of becoming overly acerbic and bitter in his exchanges. They're, they're the two points. If we, if we get to that point, well, then it'll be a very interesting debate. Oh. I think also, I mean, the zingers. Mm. Does someone have the zinger line that hits social media and becomes a viral moment in the campaign? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Plus well, we, remember- haven't, we haven't had that. That's what, no. That, people in the, in the ground and that comes back to us. there is no moment in this election yeah, and that okay. comes back so far what you know Fine Gael is are hoping is that Leo Varadkar can sort of come out with something mm-hmm. the question is tone get that tone wrong you lose and, the debate and the very memorable part of the leaders debate in the last election wasn't anything anyone said or di- said it was rather that moment when Enda Kenny pointed to Micheál Martin's speaking notes when they fell on the ground. Remember that? And that was very just, um, it was an, an image that was captured, made it onto the front page of, 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 a, of an election book post that. And it was just the, the image that stayed mm. with the people we from that camp. We have a form guide here though from Leaders' Questions, you know, twice a week, every week. And this does have all the hallmarks for me of a possible scoreless draw. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, there, there's 
if you're if you're not registered to vote, um, you, it's arguable whether it's it, it's worth your while tuning in at all. The, like, tomorrow is the deadline, so go to check the register.ie for details and make sure you're on the register. If you like what you heard in this podcast, you can subscribe on the usual platforms. You can get us also on the RTE News website. From Mary Regan, political reporter, political correspondents, Michal Lahan and Paul Cunningham and me, Colm O'Mungan. That's all from us for today. We're back tomorrow. Thanks for listening.